In this video, we're going to be taking a look at angled vectors, and we're going to be talking about how to break those into components and then what to do with those components in order to get a final solution. Now, you're going to have to use two trig functions, um, sine and cosine. Um, you can use tangent, but it's usually very unlikely in these cases. So basically what you have is you have an angled component. This angled component would be 50. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a horizontal and vertical component. And you're basically going to create a 90 degree angle with those so that you always have a right triangle. Now, with those two components, we have an um, adjacent side, which is our orange vector, and then our opposite side, which is our red vector. So if you want the X component, very likely you're going to use cosine. So cosine involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse side. So we have 40 degrees. So this X component is going to be our adjacent side. So if we do a little bit of algebra here, we basically multiply both sides by the hypotenuse. So if you do want the adjacent side, it's the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. So we're going to take 50 times the cosine of 40 degrees. And then that's going to give us 38.30. And then now for our Y component, we're going to do something very similar, except we're going to use the sine because sine gives us the opposite side from that 40 degree angle. So we're going to do 50 times the sine of 40 degrees. And that's going to give us 32.14. Now, what I do as a way to double check, and this is just a, a little quick rule of thumb, is 40 degrees is a little bit under 45, 45 degrees being right in the middle of being vertical and horizontal. So that means if it's under 45, then a little bit more of it is directed in the X direction. So I should expect my X vector to have a slightly higher magnitude, which it does. It's 38.30 and this is 32.14. So I use that as a little quick check in my head so that if I accidentally put something wrong in my calculator, I might be able to catch it. And then for our second vector, we're going to do something very similar, except we are going to close off the triangle this way. We're going to go left and then we're going to go down. OK, we could go down and then left this way, except instead of a 20 degree angle, we would use 70 degrees here because it's the complement of that. Um, but I'm just going to use the angle that I'm given here. It's going to simplify things a little bit. So we have our X component here and then our Y component here. And then we're going to do something very similar. We have the hypotenuse of 15 times the cosine of 20 degrees, and then that's going to give us 14.10 if I round that off. And then for my Y component, I have 15 times the sine of 20 degrees, and then that's going to give us 5.13. Again, 20 degrees is way under 45 degrees, so it's mostly directed in the horizontal direction. So our horizontal um, vector is going to be much larger than the vertical one. Now, in most cases, the sine will give you the vertical component and the cosine will give you the horizontal component, but not in 100% of the cases. Okay. For example, I'll just draw a little one off to the side. So say, for example, you have a vector that looks like this and then you wanted the vertical component and then the horizontal component. And let's pretend you have this angle over here. If you use sine, you're going to end up getting the X component over here and not the Y component. So you see in this uh, instance over here, if you did have this angle, the opposite end of it is the X. So it's actually going to give you the X component. So I wouldn't assume that the sine of theta is always going to give you the vertical component because it depends on the scenario, but it's very likely that it will. But you definitely want to take a quick double check and look at what's opposite of the angle and then make sure that's the vertical component. And then same thing for the horizontal as well. OK, now when you are taking components of a vector, that might be the problem itself and you might be completely done. But a lot of times if you're finding components of a vector, that's because you want to combine it with other vectors. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have um, two vertical ones. So from um, this one over here, our vertical one is in red and same thing with our second one. So if we draw out our vertical ones, this one was 
0.14 upwards, so we can call that positive. And then this one is 5.13 downwards. So we have 5.13 downwards. And then we could do the same thing for the orange ones as well. We have 38.30 to the right, and I'll, I'll call that positive. And then we have 14.10, and then that one's going to be to the left. So we'll call that one negative because it's in the opposite direction. Now what you do is if you have um, multiple X and Y components, if they're going in the opposite direction, you're going to subtract them. And then if they're going in the same direction, you're going to add them up. So these two vertical ones happen to be going in opposite directions. So we would have 32.14 um, minus 5.13. And then that's going to give us um, 27 point zero one upwards and then for our horizontal components these are going in opposite directions so we're going to go ahead and subtract those and then that's going to give us 24.2 to the right now we can go ahead and piece those back together and then create our final answer and how we're going to do that is like this we're going to create a horizontal vector that goes 24.2 this way we're going to use the tip to tail method where one vector ends the next one starts go up 27.01 and then our answer is going to be drawing a vector from the beginning point to the ending point and what we're going to use is pythagorean theorem which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared so we're going to take 24.2 squared plus 27.01 squared and that would equal what we call c squared which is basically just square rooting both of those sides and then that's going to leave us with an answer of 36.27 which would be our final answer if we were to piece all of the vectors back together. Now, the final thing that you may have to look for is an angle. So we'll call this the angle theta. And how you would do that is you would take the inverse sine, or excuse me, the uh, inverse of tangent. Um, you could use the inverse of sine, cosine, or tangent, actually. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use tangent, though. So tangent is opposite. Opposite of that angle is 27.01 over the adjacent, which is 24. 0.2. And then if you take the inverse tangent of that, that's going to give us an angle of 48.14 degrees. So to sum things up, whenever you're taking components of a vector, you are going to be using trick functions such as sine and cosine. Very likely cosine is going to give you the x component, the horizontal component, and very likely sine is going to give you the vertical component. As I warned you before, that's not in 100% of the cases, but in most of them. And then if you want to combine that with other vectors, you can um, do something like this, where everything upward is positive, down is negative, anything to the right is positive, left is negative. And then you can combine your horizontal and vertical vectors together, piece them together for one final right triangle with your horizontal component and your vertical, draw a resultant vector from the beginning of your first vector, to the end of your second one, use Pythagorean theorem like we did here, and we got an answer in green of 36.27. And if you want an angle, you're gonna to have to use an inverse trig function. This one, we had actually all three sides, so we could use any inverse trig function we wanted. I decided to use the inverse um, tangent function, and then that gave us a final angle of 48.14 degrees. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze the components and put together vectors for a final solution. Thank you for watching and listening.